Hello and welcome back to W2K14 Universe. I'm your host and you're watching Monday Night Raw. This man right here, Mick Foley, is kicking off Raw tonight to try and join the Fatal 4-Way number one contenders match that will take place next week on Raw, just six days before Extreme Rules, where the WWE Championship will be on the line with the winner of that Fatal 4-Way matchup. Mick Foley looks to join Stone Cold Steve Austin, longtime rival of his, and Antonio Cesaro with the victory here tonight, but he's got some stiff competition, competition coming his way. As we await the arrival of a man who has heavily pursued becoming a champion for a long, long time. And approaching the ring from Manchester, England, weighing 246 pounds, Wayne Barrett. But it's amazing what a beard can do, isn't it? <laughs> he looks like so much more of a star with a beard. It's really strange. I don't know why. It just. I always thought he looked a little odd clean shaven, but the moment he gets the beard, he just it just looks right. Much better. <laughs> well, Wade Barrett coming on out here tonight. He's set to face off against Mick Foley. He spent a lot of the last season pursuing the Intercontinental Championship, and although he wasn't successful, he does hold a victory over John Cena and Mark Henry more recently. No. <clears throat> I'll let it be. I'm really curious to see who ends up becoming number one contender. So we've got an interesting situation coming your way uh, next Monday on Raw, as we've been informed that this elimination fatal four-way matchup that's coming your way on Raw next week uh, will be a contenders match for both the WWE Championship and the United States Championship. And that's not to say that we're going to have a unification match or anything like that. Long story short, the runner-up in next week's Fatal 4-Way matchup will be getting a United States Championship opportunity, whilst the winner of that match will become contender for the WWE Championship. So honestly, it doesn't even hurt to lose as long as you make it to the final two of that Fatal 4-Way matchup next week. And of course, what I mean by that is it's an elimination-style 4-Way, in case that's confusing to anybody. So uh, that should be very interesting to see play out. I'm very, very curious to find out who will be not only challenging The Rock for the WWE Championship, but Dolph Ziggler for the United States Championship. Obviously, with Extreme Rules now, which is two weeks away, Raw has not had a lot of time to prepare for Extreme Rules, but we're getting there. We've been told that Daniel Bryan will be getting his rematch against Sheamus for the European Championship at Extreme Rules. We've been told that Kofi Kingston will be getting his rematch for the Cruiserweight Championship against six at Extreme Rules. Uh, the Divas Championship will find the contender tonight as we are set to have a six woman over the. No, sorry, not over the top rope. Pinfall submission, just a standard battle royal. We're going to find out who's going to be next in line for the Divas Championship, who will face the leader at Extreme Rules. Uh, we'll also be finding out who will be challenging for the WWE Tag Team Championship at Extreme Rules. We've got a one on one match coming your way tonight. Mr. Fuji has brought together a absolutely terrifying sounding tag team here on Raw, known as Team Japan. Mr. Fuji will be managing the duo of Tensai and Yokozuna, and if you didn't see Yokozuna's debut on Saturday against Daniel Bryan, that is a very, very big addition to Monday Night Raw, and that is a team that I feel could go a very, very long distance together. So uh, tonight we'll be seeing Tensai represent Team Japan in a contenders match as he is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Kofi Kingston, who will be representing his team with Justin Gabriel. The winner of that will be meeting 3MB for the WWE Tag Team Championship at Extreme Rules in two weeks' time. Uh, so we're getting everything kind of all at once here tonight. We already know that Batista will be facing off against Brock Lesnar at Extreme Rules. And the stipulations are to follow. Don't worry, we're not... We're not having an extreme rules without extreme stipulations. It's just that those extreme stipulations are still to be determined. Wade Barrett going for a power bomb. Foley with a nice reversal there. DDT onto Wade Barrett. <clears throat> now Foley going in for a pile driver here on Barrett. 
And as much as uh, I believe Furley would love to get a shot at The Rock at the WWE Championship, or even Dolph Ziggler in the United States Championship, is this it? No. I believe that for Foley tonight, this is really about getting into that Fatal 4-Way and making sure that Stone Cold Steve Austin is not in any of those championship matches. I, I can only imagine that is Mick Foley's sole motive heading into uh, next Monday and obviously winning tonight's one-on-one -on -one match against Wade Barrett. And Barrett forced to tap out. You can never beat a good old-fashioned sleeper hole. Not in this season. Get, get used to that. We've got about 100 episodes of uh, underwhelming submission finishes to come, but could be worse. Could be worse. Well, I guess he's not all there mentally just yet. Still rocking back and forth following this victory. Mick Foley... I mean, he's channeling a little bit of every personality right now. Coming from Mankind to Cactus Jack in a heartbeat. Um, Mick Foley does join that Fatal 4-Way next week. So right now it is Stone Cold Steve Austin, Antonio Cesaro, and Mick Foley. We've still got one more participant to be determined later on tonight. Shawn Michaels faces a mystery opponent. We promised a very, very big opponent for Shawn Michaels tonight. I can't wait to find out. Who that is, let's get on to the next match then. The following six man contest is an elimination. Six man. Nicely wide and dusty. From Scottsdale, Arizona. Nikki Bella. Couldn't just say the following contest is a battle royal. Had to call it a six man contest. <clears throat> well, out first we have Nikki Bella, and there are five more entrants to join this battle royal as we look to find out who will be next in line for Lita's Divas Championship. This is going to be, I'd imagine, a very stacked battle royal. Of course, I've mentioned this many times before. We only have nine Divas in the WWE for the next season. Uh, there won't be any more signings, unfortunately, but... Uh, you know, nine's not bad, right? <laughs> nine's not bad. And approaching the ring from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, Natalia. Natalia's awesome. Okay. That was actually fairly controlled for Lawler. I'll let him off with that one. <laughs> Well, Natalia, of course, she is no stranger to the Divas Championship. She has picked up wins when people have expected them the least. So this could be a, a big opportunity for her here tonight. Of course, I can say the same for Nikki Bella, given a hell of an opportunity tonight, despite her track record. But, you know, new seasons, clean slates. I mean, look at this. Brand new Diva already potentially next in line for the championship. He's really trying not to say anything too weird. <laughs> like, listening in on every line that comes out of Lola's mouth now. Like, go on, say something really strange. I'm waiting for it. <clears throat> I feel like Michael Cole isn't going to say anything for every single Diva entrance. Well, perhaps Caitlyn could surprise us in what would be her second ever victory by becoming contender for the Divas Championship. If there's one thing that I think is going to knock Lita off, potentially, it's the unexpected. And that's exactly where Lita comes, I mean, where Caitlyn comes in. From the United Kingdom, Tiny 60. Tiny 60? <laughs> I wanted to find something that sounded closer to shiny than star, and I saw 60, so I thought maybe that would work. I had not actually previewed how it sounded, so that was... That was a genuine reaction to me. But uh, yeah, Tiny Shiny, of course. Uh, Three-time women's champion, a record that she will now hold for as long as that championship remains retired. Perhaps she could be the next Divas champion, a title that she's not yet won, as a matter of fact. Her entrance is so fast that I forgot to skip what she got in the ring. <laughs> it's just so quick compared to everyone else's. Of course, two days ago on Superstars, we saw Layla kick off Season 4 with a big victory over the debuting Aksana, who I thought was actually pretty impressive. 
kind of surprised she was admitted from this battle royal, but you can't fit everybody in. Someone had to uh, be given a miss, and obviously Caitlyn at least won her debut match, and Nikki Bella has got more wins under her belt than Aksana, because she's actually won at least one match. That sounded really disrespectful, I didn't mean for it to. And of course, finally, just a natural pick in this battle royal, AJ Lee. You know, she didn't manage to win the Divas Championship from Lita at WrestleMania 3, but that doesn't mean that the dream has to be over. As it currently stands, when the Divas title has been on the line and the match has involved those two, they are one-to-one -one with each other. AJ Lee won the Divas Championship by last eliminating Lita in a four-way match back at, I believe it was Hell in a Cell of last year. But, uh... Lita won the championship from Beth Phoenix, not AJ Lee, who won the title from AJ Lee, obviously. And uh, Lee pursued a championship opportunity for a long time. She got it at WrestleMania. She came up short. But maybe another opportunity to settle the score is right down the line. Sorry to cough. All right, here we go. Battle Royal. Pinfall submissions only for each elimination. Thank you for finally adding um, six more Battle Royals to the game. I really appreciate that. I don't know why they weren't in there already. You'd think that's ridiculous, but at least they are now. I knew there was a um, PS3 360 era universe game I'd played where I did like six woman battle royals, but I didn't realize it was 14. I guess it must like the odds are that it would have been 14 because that's the one I did for two years. I'm really digging my heels in and being like, I don't like 2K15, and now I'm like, 2K15 is way better. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't like 2K15, or just, probably just because I didn't have a uh, then-current-gen console. Um, so, the, 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 the previous-gen, the 360 PS3-gen version of 2K15 was kind of, kind of really crappy. I never bought it. I watched someone play it and I was like, it's it's just 2K14 but with less. A very different roster, but generally less. Whereas at least uh, the PC, PS4, uh, Xbox One version, sorry, uh, is a very improved version. Much better gameplay. I think, now I might jinx this, I think I've finally resolved my video randomly lagging up problems. Um, I think I found out, I could be wrong, but I think there was a setting that basically meant that uh, the capture card wasn't using my graphics card, and I have a very, very good graphics card, uh, and a pretty good gra uh, capture card. It's a little dated at this point, but it does the job. Um, I think because it wasn't using my graphics card, it just was like falling behind, because it was just going off of my computer's power, which, I mean, it's a pretty tough computer, but... It doesn't have a very big hard drive and not a lot of RAM, so probably just slowing it down a bit. But now it's using mostly the uh, graphics card. Yeah, because they have a CPU usage of 2%, so <laughs> should be alright now. Shouldn't get the video lagging up anymore, hopefully. It, otherwise, I'd have to imagine it's, it's just got to be <clears throat> that it's actually like this game. I mean, this was a good way to test it, because a uh, six-person battle royal, you know, the ring is full. Well, I spoke before about the fact that, obviously, next week's Fatal 4-Way, the runner-up gets a US Championship shot, and the winner gets a WWE Championship shot. Uh, one thing that I want to throw in as well, on top of that, is that uh, we've got a tag team match coming your way here tonight to get a kind of a preview of what could go down at Extreme Rules as Antonio Cesaro and Stone Cold, who won their matches respectively last week on Raw, are set to compete uh, together in a tag team match against the WWE Champion The Rock and the United States Champion Dolph Ziggler. A big tag team main event coming your way tonight. Big discus clothesline there by Natalia as Tony Shiny eliminates Nikki Bella from the match. I must say, I'm not too surprised to see Nikki Bella go first, but this, well, that just breaks my heart. That is just unfortunate. The road to becoming a Divas Champion once again is a long and arduous one for AJ Lee, and it looks like it's not any closer to being fulfilled here tonight now. That is a shame. So we've come down to Natalia, Caitlyn, Layla, 
and Tiny Shiny. Now, Tiny Shiny and Layla, those two are allies. Those two, you know, they see eye to eye. They get on very well. They're both British. <laughs> Uh, and one of them has, well, they've both been longing for the Divas Championship. Was that the layout there by late? I believe it was. Cover attempt on Caitlyn. As the 925 connects on Natalia. Are we going to come down to Tiny Shiny and Layla? No. Natalia kicking out of the 925. I mean, definitely there was a long way in between moves there. Help kind of create some, uh, Separation, a bit of an opening for Natalia to kick out to recover a little bit. Our attempt again by Tiny Shiny, and again Natalia kicks out. Don't look like Layla was going for a fast one on her friend there, but Tiny Shiny caught her off guard, and now the former Divas Champion gets the 9 2 I mean, sorry, the former Women's Champion never won the Divas Championship. <laughs> Cover attempt here on Layla. Tiny Shiny, no, she doesn't eliminate Layla. Okay, 925 not getting the job done all of a sudden. That, that move has won a lot of matches in the past. I am surprised. She misses with a, wild strike. a little bit of a double team here by Natalia and Layla. Neither Natalia nor Tiny Shiny are strangers to championships. This is a very important match for Layla, but she seems to be maybe turning her back a little bit on her friend Tiny Shiny here. For one reason or another, I mean, perhaps they're taking out the bigger threat. Tiny Shiny is one championship higher than Natalia. Natalia is a former one-time Divas champion and a former women's champion. But only once on both of those. And here comes that discus clothesline by Natalia. Went a little low there. Cover attempt. Layla taking the pin. Well, that's a shocking twist there. Layla really going all out, doing whatever it takes to win, including turning against her own friend. Layla's really got to win this now. I mean, it's got to have been worth it, right? <clears throat> I was saying just Saturday on Superstars, I feel like Layla's time to shine could be right around the corner. I feel like uh, we've been waiting a long time for her to get another opportunity. Well, I mean, a long time. It's been like two months. She got a shot St. Valentine's Day Massacre. But both of these two have had fairly recent Divas Championship opportunities. I mean, these are two women that uh, Lita has defeated in the past, but perhaps Extreme Rules can play to their favor. Natalia now going in for the Sharpshooter Submission Hold. Can she force a tap out from Natalia here? Yes. Well, she may have suffered a loss to Caitlyn last week, but she is bouncing back very strongly from that tonight. Natalia will be next in line for a Divas Championship opportunity against Lita. Here is your winner, Natalia. An incredible match. And uh, we should we should spin the wheel. We should find out what matchup those two will be facing off in. That's right. I forgot to mention we're going to be spinning a wheel to find out. Uh, what kind of matches people are going to be facing off in at Extreme Rules. So uh, I'll be sure to tell you uh, what those will be when we come back in a moment as uh, we are currently getting the wheel ready. But we'll find out in just a moment who, what kind of a matchup Lita will face Natalia in at Extreme Rules. Kofi can fly, guys. Did you see him? He did it. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring. Accompanied by Justin Gabriel. From Ghana, West Africa. Weighing 221 pounds. Kofi Kingston. I don't know why it's not doing superstar threads for, like, managers. They've been a little weird for some reason. They don't seem to be entirely working. Anyway, I promised you guys that I'd be revealing to you the championship stipula or the stipulation for the Divas Championship match. Uh, Natalia and Lee will be facing off in an Extreme Rules match. Wow. I tell you, I have got a bad feeling about 3MB's championship reign if Team Japan get a shot at the WWE Tag Team Championship at Extreme Rules. They just won those titles, but I don't know how Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre can overcome, you know, an 800-pound combined team of 
Yokozuna and Tensai. This could be massive. No, 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 for fuck's sake, hang on. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. You're seeing that. Oh, I don't want to be a manager. No! All right, fine. Jeez. Well, that's right. Lita and Natalia will be facing off in an Extreme Rules match. Looking forward to that. I've also been confirmed that uh, Brock Lesnar and Batista will a match that intense, a match that severe, a match between two people that hate each other that much. It's a year in the making, and it's going to be resolved inside hell in a cell. That's what we're going to be seeing at Extreme Rules between those two. The only non-title matchup of the night. Also, I can break the news to you that for the Cruiserweight Championship, X-Pac and Kofi Kingston, sorry, yeah, Kofi Kingston, my mistake, will be competing in a table match. Kofi Kingston could be going 2-0 at Extreme Rules if he wins this match here tonight. That could be really big for him. And on top of that, Sheamus and Daniel Bryan will be facing off in a last man standing match. That's right, we're spinning the wheel, we're making the deal uh, this year for Extreme Rules. It's all going to be decided by the wheel. And so far, we've got an Extreme Rules match, a table match, and a last man standing match. So that's pretty swell, if I do say so myself. Following this match, I'll be sure to tell you what kind of a match Team Japan or uh, Kofi and Justin Gabriel will be... Oh, wow, okay. Got a little more mist in the tank than usual. Whoever wins this matchup, what match they'll be facing off against 3MB for the W Tag Team Championship in, we'll be able to tell you that following this match. In a way, I kind of want Kofi Kingston to lose here tonight, because I feel like two Extreme Rules type matches, yeah, he could walk out a real big winner. We could be looking at the next Cruiserweight WWE Tag Team Champion. I definitely feel like him and Gabriel, they've worked for it enough. I do feel like it's a little harsh that they have to even go through anyone at this point, you know? The only tag team uh, with any real estab- Sorry, the only, only tag teams with any real establishment here on Raw are the uh, NWO combination of Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash, as well as um, <clears throat> the tag team The Real Americans. And neither of those have really worked too much as a tag team. I feel like this should be kind of a given for Gabriel and Kofi. These guys have been, at least in the last few months, we've seen these guys as a pretty solid combination. I'll make the rules, though. Tensai going in for a cover attempt here on Kofi. Gabriel distracting the referee. You don't often see Gabriel fight dirty like that, but I guess look at what they're up against. They need every single inch they can get in this matchup. Kofi crawling towards the ropes desperately. Desperately trying to reach those ropes. There's no way he's going to be able to power out when he's got someone like Tensai on his back. And Kofi's reached the ropes, but the referee doesn't see it. There he does. Gabriel providing plenty of distraction in this matchup right now. I mean, obviously, this is bright and high for him. There's a W Tag Team title opportunity at stake. One thing I will say is we don't actually know what the compatibility of Yokozuna and Tensai even is yet. We've not seen them as a team. We just know that they are both under the management of this Mr. Fuji, who's just suddenly arrived on the scene. That leg drop connecting by Kofi Kingston as he takes down Tensai, and he's not quite got him yet. Oh, wow, okay, trouble in paradise. Can Kofi Kingston pin Tensai? Well, Mr. Fuji here. He's going to make sure that he has something to say about it. Kofi Kingston backing off. And he's distracted by Mr. Fuji as he says something to him there. Strike to the throat as he turns around. Tensai with that poison mist claw. Oh boy. Gabriel, don't distract the ref. Just let Kofi lose this one gracefully in this situation. Cover attempt here. Gabriel doesn't want to let it go though. Kofi Kingston, he's, he, he's covered, and okay, he's able to kick out. Well, I mean, that's respectful. I was worried that we were just going to see him continue to be pinned for a very long time there. Submission hold again here by Tensai as he continues to punish Kofi Kingston. I feel like at this point, 
Gabriel may be doing more harm than good to his tag team partner by making him continue to compete in this matchup. Fans are in support of Kofi Kingston, who can blame them? As I said before, I feel like him and Gabriel, they've really worked for this opportunity, but sometimes that's just not enough, I guess. Sometimes the bigger guy is just going to be the better guy, too. And right now, Tensai looks like he's got the guy. Stomp on the back of Kofi Kingston. Kofi rolling out the reversal here. We're all up attempt here by Tensai. You don't often see Tensai go desperation move. Kofi turning it around. Gabriel and Fuji arguing on the outside. If I was the ref, I'd kick both of these two out of the ring right now. This is really not helping anybody. Cover attempt here on Tensai. Referee still dealing with Mr. Fuji. It looks like Justin Gabriel has been kicked at the very least, but Fuji still allowed to be out here, unfortunately, for Kofi Kingston. Sweeps the leg out from underneath Tensai. Kofi now picking Tensai up to his feet. Rolls him up. Smart move by Kofi Kingston. There's one way you're going to beat Tensai, and here we go again. Here we go again. At what point is enough going to be enough? But once again, the poison claw coming into effect. Ref, why have you not kicked Mr. Fuji from ringside at this point? Gabriel was kicked fairly quickly. I gotta think a second poison claw takedown by Tensai. That's gotta be it. Kofi's not immortal. And unfortunately, that is it. I wish 3MB the best of luck. As I say, the only thing they've got over these guys is I feel like... So, okay, there's another bell ring. I feel like Slater and McIntyre have worked very well as a team in their first match. We haven't yet seen the, com the uh, chemistry between Team Japan, but as Team Japan secure that W Tag Team title opportunity, we've been told that their match at uh, TLC will be a... A TLC match! Okay, well that's an interesting matchup type. For these two teams to be facing off in. I uh, definitely think there's a little bit of an advantage there actually for 3MB. I don't know how uh, Yokozuna and Tensai are going to be climbing a ladder, but hey, I mean, we've probably got some pretty sturdy ladders out there, right? This, I'll tell you one thing, this is going to be an interesting tag team match. I don't know how Slater and McIntyre plan to make out with the tag team titles. I wish them the best of luck. <clears throat> As we move on up next, We'll be finding out who that final participant will be in the number one contender's fatal four-way for next week's Raw. Will it be Shawn Michaels, or will it be... Well, I'm very curious what the future holds for the New World Order here on Raw. As I mentioned last week, the teams have been separated out. We have the New World Order, Shawn Michaels and Kevin Nash here on Raw. And representing the New World Order over on Friday nights, we have uh, Six and uh, the newly debuted Kurt Hennig. And uh, we've been told that there's plenty of room for more. Shawn Michaels has said that he is going to take it upon himself when he sees fit to initiate superstars in matches. He said he's going to, I don't really understand how this works, but apparently we're going to be seeing matches in which he'll challenge someone, and if he defeats them, they must join his group. I'm not really sure that he has that kind of jurisdiction over the roster, but Michael says that he'll only be given that opportunity when he sees it's fit anyway. I'm not entirely sure what has gotten into this man just lately, but the ego has really blown up on Shawn Michaels worse than ever before. And I wonder who his opponent is tonight, his mystery opponent. We've been waiting for this all night. Apparently one of the biggest debut slash returns. Here you go. It has been two whole years since we have seen the Macho Man Randy Savage grace this ring. 
once a front runner for the United States Championship. He is pulling no punches tonight, coming straight in and going for a shot at the WWE Championship. This is what I mean though, if you're someone that's already been fairly established, you can come back in a big way, and that's exactly where Macho Man Randy Savage fits in, and what an absolutely iconic match we might have here tonight. Randy Savage and Shawn Michaels one-on-one. -on -one. Well, if this isn't worthy of the main event, I don't know what is, but unfortunately it's not our main event tonight. But fortunately, we are still gonna get to see it, and that's what matters the most. This is gonna be great. Shawn Michaels charging straight in. It is so good to see the Macho Man back in a Raw ring. As I said, it's been two years since this man left Monday Night Raw, and now he is back. <clears throat> I am so happy to see the Macho Man back in business. It might have actually been close to one year, to be fair. I think he was in uh, Season 2 until fairly close to the end. Either way, how can you not be excited for this? Shawn Michaels is really in for a tough challenge here tonight. Two very technically gifted superstars, one on one. What a great addition to the Raw roster, honestly. And what a great main event scene we have here on Raw, as a matter of fact. You know, obviously I understand SmackDown has got a lot of uh, legends, just living legends, working over there, you know, from the from the World of It Champion Triple H, to The Undertaker, to uh, John Cena, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, JBL, you know, there's uh, Sheamus, another one, I'm sure there's plenty, plenty more, you know, they've got Edge and Christian as well, some of the greatest tag champions, just such a solid roster over on SmackDown, I'm not going to ever deny the success of SmackDown, but I really feel like Raw has really been picking up steam just lately. Uh, with the with these signings and obviously some of the draft picks they've got, you know, I think we're very much looking at the future in a way uh, With a lot of these guys a lot of people here on Raw that haven't yet really had a taste of championship success Or obviously in the case of like Dolph Ziggler. They're just now finally getting in the groove of things I do feel like this is gonna be uh, a great year for Raw and Smackdown respectively and of course we also have NXT which, uh, don't forget, this Wednesday on NXT, we'll be finding out who the final four men on the NXT roster are. And with that, we'll also be finding out the final two participants in the NXT Championship Tournament. And, on top of that, perhaps more importantly, we're going to be finding out the very first person to be heading into the semi-finals of the NXT Championship Tournament. Shawn Michaels getting that class <clears throat> classic sequence of moves off there as he's now setting up the announce table. We're going to see the old Shawn Michaels moonsault onto an announce table spot, perhaps. DDT there by Michaels to Randy Savage. And obviously, I guess there's a little bit of ring rust for the Macho Man here tonight. Michaels can't be serious. Going to the top against the Macho Man, that's his territory with that famous elbow drop. A move, by the way, that Shawn Michaels himself also uses. And the thing about Shawn Michaels, though, is he's got that sweet chin music. You never know when that move is going to get busted out. You really do have no idea. And Shawn Michaels running straight into a power slam there by Randy Savage scoop slam into yep you've been not seen this for a year can't get my words out right that huge elbow drop from the Macho Man cover attempt here on Shawn Michaels oh I actually thought for a minute there that this one was done Gotta give Shawn Michaels more credit than I thought Manhattan drop there on Randy Savage caught him perfectly and now going to turn up and there you go Exactly what I'm talking about. You just never know when you're gonna see the sweet chin music And of course unfortunately that one busting macho man open That's not the way this man I think wanted to come back But managing to kick out of sweet chin music might just be more so how he wanted to and I saw there for a minute It went to start lagging and it didn't so I'm gonna say that I fixed that problem now Thank the Lord for that because that was probably actually affecting the recordings. Oh, no, now it's getting back. Okay, well, I will shut up. I don't think I can fix that, I'm afraid. I think that's just how it's going to be this season. I mean, to be fair, I recorded Twilight Princess HD the same way I recorded this, and it never had that problem. So I don't really know why. Look at these frames. <laughs> Randy 
Randy Savage really, really spinning up a storm there on Shawn Michaels. Covers Michaels and a kick out. I mean, hang on, the question is, if I pause it. Yeah, it's not actually the menus that are like, okay, it's got to be the game then. Well, what can you do? Also, if you hear that humming in the background, that's the PS3 as well. Don't know why, but it's suddenly making a lot of noise today. It doesn't normally. It's probably just where it's placed, I'm very aware, but... I just thought I'd explain it, because I know that's probably being picked up on the microphone. Submission hold applied here by Randy Savage. Michael is able to get to the ropes. Michael is now going in for a roll-up attempt here. Savage turning things around in his own favor as he covers Shawn Michaels. Has he got him done here? Michaels scooping Savage up, and he's got him down. Both shoulders on the mat, and Savage able to kick out of that one. What a great match this has been. Shawn Michaels and Randy Savage. One on what Shawn Michaels right now. He doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, I did actually read somewhere that apparently it, it specifically gets quite laggy when there's legends in the match. Which would probably be why it hasn't so far in this show. Because I've used, what, Tensai, Kofi, all the Divas, and... Foley and Ziggler, so I mean, at most it had the chance, not Foley and Ziggler, Foley and, uh... Why have I forgotten who Foley just beat? Oh my god! Foley and Barrett, yeah, that's right. So at most, this one's probably the first time it's really gotten the chance to, I guess. There's two legends. That's a really weird problem if that is the case, though. Shawn Michaels, I gotta say, right now he is getting schooled by Randy Savage. And you know, I find it interesting, I've been saying this before, I don't know where the alliance between Nash and Michaels even sits with the way Michaels has been running his mouth off. I can't help but notice that uh, Nash is not here in support of Shawn Michaels tonight. I'm starting to wonder if this New World Order thing is even a genuine thing, you know? Great takedown there by Shawn Michaels, by the way. Savage able to kick out. Michaels catching uh, Savage with that big leap. And it looked like he was going for the sharpshooter there, but Randy Savage said no. And Savage going up top once again for the elbow drop a second time. Oh, Michaels moving out of the way. My God, what a fight this is. These two just going back and forth. Michael's kicking out. Savage scooping him up. Here we go. That has got to be the beginning of the end for Shawn Michaels. That man is laid out. Savage going up. Oh my god, there you go. You just never know when to expect those. I say it every time. Savage's foot was in the ropes though, so this one's still going. Kick to the midsection. Michaels now catching Savage. Pile driver. My God. Cover attempt here. Is this going to be enough to put Savage away? He's still kicking out. I think fresh off of that super kick off the top, he could have caught him with the pinfall, but... And the thing about Savage is I feel like he's going to be very hesitant to go up top now. I mean, how can you feel any confidence heading up top when you know Michaels can just leap up and take you down. I stand corrected, Randy Savage. He's going up again. Michael's on his feet and again. I mean, I guess you really can't be too surprised that that would happen twice. And Michael's making the mistake of right near the ropes once again. The, the placement of these pinfall attempts has really been Shawn Michaels' downfall in this matchup. And now he's doing whatever it takes to wear the Macho Man out. And the Macho Man is still seeming to hang in there. Yes. Oh, 
takes him down. Macho Man not giving up. He's tried this twice and twice it's not worked. Macho Man with Shawn Michaels on his feet goes for the double axe handle, but Michaels able to reverse that. I mean, he did kind of really let him know that was coming. He gave him plenty of time. And I swear, Macho Man you might need to just give this one up. Never mind. This. Oh, okay. <laughs> I stand corrected. Runs straight into another super kick. How many more can this guy eat? That's got to be it. That has got to be the closing moment of this matchup. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. It was a great return for the Macho Man. He may have come up short, but he has really let people know that he is a part of Monday Night's. Um, what? Huh? I... Huh? <laughs> but why? But why? Well, the stage has been set for next week's Fatal 4-Way Contenders match. And what a stage it is. Antonio Cesaro, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mick Foley, and Shawn Michaels. Two men in that Fatal 4-Way next week will be walking out with matches at Extreme Rules. One, a United States Championship opportunity, and the other, a WWE Championship opportunity. The, mat the rules for that match next week are simple. It is an elimination Fatal 4-Way matchup. Uh, the, f the first and second men eliminated are just simply eliminated. And then when it comes down to the final two, the uh, loser of those final two is the runner-up with a United States Championship opportunity, whilst the winner of next week's four-way gets a WWE Championship opportunity. And with regards for um, those matches next week uh, to determine who will be uh, walking in with a US and a W Championship opportunity, I can announce to you that uh, the stipulations have already been set for both matches. The United States Championship will be determined inside of a steel cage, which I think is very favorable to Dolph Ziggler, to be honest. Uh, when you look at some of the people in this match, people like Shawn Michaels, people like Antonio Cesaro, one of those two has a good chance of being the runner-up, if not the winner, and uh, inside of a steel cage, Ziggler doesn't have to worry about that outside interference, whilst the Rocks match, the WWE Championship match, will be an Extreme Rules 2 out of 3 falls main event for the WWE Championship. And this is a man right here that I know would probably love to get an opportunity again at the Rock after the classic that they had at Elimination Chamber. Uh, for the shot that ended up winning The Rock, the WWE Championship. I think Stone Cold Steve Austin The Rock has the potential to be one of the greatest feuds of all time. If it's given a chance. It could be. It could be. That man wears the United States Championship with pride. I said it before and I'll say it again. Two years ago, he won that championship for the first time. It's his only singles championship he has ever accomplished. And uh, it came to an end just nine days afterwards. Eight days afterwards, I believe. As it was uh, pay-per-view night and he held on to it until the Raw after that pay-per-view. Well, the, the Raw the week after that pay-per-view. I think I just said the same thing twice. Eight days after that pay-per-view. <laughs> In which he was cheated out of the United States Championship and he allowed the potential for history to repeat itself when he put that championship on the line open challenge last week on Raw. Ziggler said he was taken on all comers, he'd gladly defend that championship against anyone and if it, history repeated itself, well it wasn't meant to be and in the end Dolph Ziggler retained the United States Championship.
Now, this is a very interesting situation because obviously the winner of next week's Fatal 4-Way gets a shot at The Rock. And you look at the lineup of people, Mick Foley, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels, and the 2012 Royal Rumble winner, Antonio Cesaro. It's a very, very interesting playing field for sure for the WWE Champion and the United States Champion. They've got some real tough opposition coming their way in just 13 days. The first Raw pay-per-view is going to be a big one. Austin squaring up to The Rock. The Rock paying him no mind. I do wonder if we will see those two clash again. I said before, I'll say it again, their Elimination Chain match was so good. I would love to see them go one-on-one -on -one again. It seems like Austin is very much game for that. I don't want to play the part. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's always the manager or the partner when you randomize it like that, I find. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in finding out what exactly goes down at Extreme Rules. You know, I think about Steel Cage, I think about two out of three falls, I think about who those matches would favor the most in that situation. Obviously, I feel like the Steel Cage keeps the outside interference out. If he ends up, if Ziggler ends up having to defend against Cesaro or Shawn Michaels, for example, then Kevin Nash or Jack Swagger. They will be kept out of that match entirely. It will be a one-on-one -on -one match, just Ziggler and the challenger. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be an easy match for Ziggler, but it does mean that he won't be screwed out of his championship. The Rock, however, two out of three falls. Extreme rules. I mean, that's a, that's a long match right there. You know you're in for a big main event when you hear that. We've got a whole lot of things coming your way at Extreme Rules, though. You know, Hell in a Cell match, TLC, table match, last man standing, the whole lot. Great match here. But if you missed any of the matches from this week, go to WWE.com to catch up on all the action. You won't find any of these matches on WWE.com, just a fair heads up. Now, if you go to YouTube.com forward slash... I think it's still WTXJ, I don't think I can change that. <laughs> You go to YouTube and search Just Jitch Universe, and you can find all the classic episodes. And if you want all the information without all the watching, just go to justjitch.wikia.com and check out all the history right there. You can just read about it right there. You can read everything that you need without having to watch a single episode. I mean, obviously, I prefer if you did watch the episodes. It helps the channel grow. I, I make money off of it, you know. It's great. All you have to do is watch my videos and you're supporting me a lot. And I thank you very much for that. I thank everyone very much for that time. But, um, <clears throat> obviously, if you want to just read about it, I've spent hundreds of hours writing up for the wiki. So I'm not going to be upset about that either. It's definitely easier than watching many, many hours. <laughs> Probably take pretty long to read it. Uh, I guess to be fair, you could just read up on the things you're more curious about. And there are a lot of pages where there's like, well, like Jake Roberts' initial run. He only ever competed in one match, so there's only a write-up for that one match. But looks like Cesaro wanted to make a tag out to Stone Cold Steve Austin, but Austin's a little bit caught up with Dolph Ziggler on the outside. Is Austin even gonna get up on the apron to tag Cesaro in? I mean, I guess the win tonight doesn't matter too much, and Austin's made it quite clear he doesn't want any friends in this industry. Cover attempt, not enough. Oh, never mind, Austin catching the rock there, and a little bit of teamwork from Antonio Cesaro, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And, uh, I believe that's supposed to be Austin doing that to Cesaro. I think it messed up. I'm pretty sure Stone Cold Steve Austin just struck... Cesaro and walked out on this matchup. Is that, is that what just went down there? Yes, it is. Okay. Don't really know what I should Dolph, but we'll, we'll ignore the fact that that was Dolph Ziggler because that's just classic THQ games at their finest. Yes, I know this game has 2K in it, but if you look in the history, it was pretty much made by THQ. All, all that 2K did was finish it. Not very well. I will criticize them for that. Absolutely. But yeah.
Honestly, this was a good way for THQ to go out. But yeah, I guess it's no surprise, you know, the last time Austin was in a tag match was a lot alongside Mankind on SmackDown. That's what started this whole issue with Austin. He, uh... He wouldn't get tagged in by Mankind, and uh, he took his frustrations out on that. He was very upset about that. And so uh, now this feels like this has become a one-sided matchup for sure. Antonio Cesaro, I mean, he's going to be out for revenge next week against Austin in that four-way. But yeah, as I said before, the win tonight doesn't really matter for uh, a lot of these guys. Well, obviously a win always matters, but you know what I mean, right? Like... There's just not that much pressure on this, in a way. Guillotine choke here by Dolph Ziggler as he tries to force a submission out of Antonio Cesaro. Who I feel is going to fight until the bitter end against these two if he can. But it's not like Jack Swagger can come out here and stand in for Austin. This match is 2-1-1 uh, on -one going forward. Austin has walked out. That is very fit for who Austin has been just lately. Cesaro perhaps looking for that neutralizer. Perhaps he had second thoughts. I do wonder if this is a match Antonio Cesaro can still win. I mean, you think about it. Beating the two top champions here on Raw by yourself. Well, that's a hell of an accolade if he can do it. Also, you don't want to miss it. We've been told that this Saturday on Superstars, we'll be getting a taste of Team Japan's match against 3MB next Sunday at Extreme Rules. As Jinder Mahal has accepted the challenge, he will go one-on-one -on -one with Yokozuna this Saturday on Superstars. I wish Jinder Mahal the best of luck in that one-on-one -on -one match. Of course, Jinder not one of the W Tag Team Champions. It is McIntyre and Slater that are the W Tag Team Champions of 3MB, but even still, Jinder will be uh, accepting the challenge on his allies' behalf, and we'll see if Jinder can defeat Yokozuna. Cesaro continuing to hang in there. This guy's tough. This guy is very tough. Rock going straight in, and he has seen enough. Rock bottom on Antonio. Well, okay. Well, I mean, I guess maybe he just wanted to greet him a little kindly. However, attempt here by The Rock, the WWE Champion. It's over. Well, I mean, and Cesaro never really stood a chance. He was up against the two champions, two singles champions of Monday Night Raw. Two on one. Austin really did him no favors here tonight. <clears throat> well, I felt like these two worked pretty nicely as a team, even if they did have a little bit easy tonight. Antonio Cesaro, on the other hand, I think he may need to just stick to teaming with Jack Swagger in the future, you know? Saw how working alongside Damian Sandow worked out for him on SmackDown. This guy just can't make other allies, but Swagger will definitely be a real friend as these two are victorious, closing out this week's Raw. Don't forget to tune in this Wednesday for NXT when we find out the final four superstars on the NXT roster. And on top of that, we will be finding out who will be the first to head in to the semifinals. I believe the semifinal matchup, it will be either Dusty Rhodes or Titus O'Neil. Is that correct? That is correct. So that will be our main event this Wednesday on NXT. Plenty of action to come. I'll see you guys two days time for NXT.